रोड सेफ्टी वर्ल्ड सीरीज सीजन टू को पावर्ड बाय पेटीएम से यूपीआई एंड फेबले न्यूज खेल जा डिजिटल स्पॉन्सर म्यूचुअल फंड सही है We could be in line for a very interesting run chase here. It's the Australia Legends against the West Indies Legends match 17 of this Road Safety World Series from Dehradun. Beautiful location in the foothills of the Himalayas, the Rajiv Gandhi International Cricket Stadium, one of the best in terms of setting. Nice new ball for those bowlers to get their hands on, but This Australian batting lineup is stacked. The top 7 looks very strong indeed. West Indies are going to have to bowl really well here as they have been most of this tournament. Alex Doolan and Shane Watson opening the batting for the Aussie legends. Shane Watson, what a T20 stalwart he's been. 335 innings, 600s, not many batsmen. have that many in this format of the game fantastic strike rate as well 138 nothing wrong with those stats Alex Doolan playing his first game of the competition he's just 36 years old 26 innings 409 runs strike rate 106 so this isn't really his favorite format but he's a young man and you never know what kind of damage he'll be able to in the first six overs the crowds just building slowly here in anticipation of the big one later on this evening india against bangladesh sachin will be out there with bat in hand darren pals had a very good tournament hasn't played loads of t20 cricket in his career just the 16 matches good economy rate not such a good average but in this road safety world series he's been impressive Brad Hogs alongside me. It's going to be very interesting this, isn't it, Brad? We've got uh, a strong batting lineup and a pretty strong bowling lineup on paper against each other. I've got this man on strike uh, on on screen pal. I've got Taylor. The big issue is getting the right matchups against the spin of the West Indies. They've got two left arm off spinners that turn the ball away from the right-hander as well as a leg spinner. So if they can get Reardon and Dunk to match up with those two particular players in that middle phase, that will be the contest where the balance of this match lies. As we saw him again, he get a lot, he got a lot of spin here this evening, slowing it up. Had a bit of havoc for the right-handed batsmen who were trying to take him down straight down the ground. That he was that turn was causing them to hit to deep mid off. not get that timing 179 the target for australia they have to win their last two games this one and against england in raipur to have any chance of going through to the semis the west indies are already there good start by darren powell as well easy pace but right on the money still something in this for the windies though they are into the semi finals but they can finish top if they win and sri lanka and india lose their last games the only way in fact to avoid those two in the semis is to win this game and finish top oh that could have gone anywhere just playing away from his body there shane watson thick inside edge this is how adaptable the west indies are pal just coming off a shorter run up still getting plenty of rhythm pace and movement with the ball hasn't affected his line as well straight away he's pressuring pressuring one of the greats of the T20 game in Shane Watson and that one is kept a little bit low so promising start this by Pau three dot balls and finally one of the balls that I predicted to keep low on this pitch has actually done it slip in up and over from Watson just that's going to roll away towards the boundary and i think it's got there unless Kirk Edwards has managed to get a big boot down on it before it touched 
the rope. Let's have a look. This is the way to scruff up the ball as well to try and get a little bit of reverse swing later on in the game. Just put your big spikes on it. That is a great piece of fielding. And it makes it easier too with this wet surface today. You can stand on the ball like that and it's going to sink in rather than the harder surfaces where you could roll the ankle in that particular attempt to field the ball. Hit a ball tampering, I think, from Kirk Hebbers there. If he's got spikes on, <laughs> nice hole for Darren Powell maybe to use the next delivery. He has done well there. Could have gone wrong, though, couldn't it? Roll an ankle when doing something like that. Up and over the leg side this time. That's a really nice shot from Shane Watson. Just a clip. It's a good field set from the West Indies here because Shane Watson prefers to go through the mid-on, mid-wicket region with a straight bat. And they've forced him to play something that he doesn't like playing early on. So for a bowler, you don't mind that boundary. Two men out at the moment. The third man and a long on for Shane Watson. Wow. That uh, will be a no ball. Just came out the hand a little bit wrong. As can happen when you don't bowl too often and you've retired. He's been spending a bit of time over in the USA helping the cricketers there. So he might have been playing a little bit of baseball as well. Yeah, maybe trying to knuckleball or something like that. Bowl a few of those in baseball or throw a few of those. Not a bad first over though. Darren Powell at all. It goes for seven. The lights are on, and thankfully, the weather is dry at the moment. We've had plenty of rain over the last few days, but fingers crossed we can get two full games in today. Vishma Santoki, left arm, side arm, with a fantastic record, 180 wickets in 119 T20 matches. We'll open the bowling from the other end. And he's bowling well in this tournament. He's picked up five wickets already in a couple of games. Awkward customer because of the angle. No great pace. Starts with the wide. So an interesting angle for Alex Doolin to get used to playing his first game. Not something you can really practice for, is it? Someone who bowls like this. There aren't too many bowlers in the nets that can replicate this. He won't mind if he keeps bowling it down there. Well, he's bowling from the college end. He might have to go and see the professor to find out what's happened with his radar. Ben Taker, he's been a fantastic performer over the years. Just remember, it's a tough run up, the ground's soggy, and bowlers just aren't quite comfortable, especially the quick bowlers today. That's where he's aiming. Malinga esque, isn't it? It's like a left arm Malinga with a bit less pace. Just tails in to the right hand, a very full 
He varies his pace as well. He's got change-ups. be fair here, I think in his heyday, he was a lot quicker than this. Was sharp. And did find him hard to face. Oh, and that scuttled along the floor as well a little bit. So he's just getting a little bit darker. We're going to hope those clouds stay high up in the sky. We've seen enough rain to last a lifetime, I think, over the last week or so. Great if we could get two full games in. Haven't had any full games here in Derudun so far. Just a 15 over a side match between India and England on Thursday. Last two days have been completely washed out. Width this time, not fully timed by Shane Watson, but the big man, Suleiman Ben, manages to get down and trap it. That's a broken bat, I think, for Jane, Shane Watson, who's been in good form, Brad. This is against Bangladesh. Just muscling the ball to all parts of the ground. He's very good against pace, but he's exceptionally good against spin as well. Full bunger, clothed straight to mid wicket, taken by Jerome Taylor at a backtrack. Decent catch, but they're going to check whether this was too high. If not, West Indies are on the board. Let's have a look, shall we? Let's see the side on angle. We can see how low his arm is when he delivers the ball. So it's quite low as it is. Oh, that looks like it might be over. What do you reckon, Hoggy? Shouldn't ask me, I'm an Australian. And, uh, they need to win tonight. But looking on the evidence, I think Santoki hasn't got his man. A free hit for Shane Watson. The good thing about this, they're going upstairs and Shane Watson's able to change his bat without much delay. Well, the first job of the new bat is to try and belt the ball as hard as it can without fear of getting out. Not a bad job. What's Santoki going to do now with the free hit? Men out at the moment. Deep square leg and a long on. That seems to be a key position for Shane Watson. He does love that area. Here we go. Wide outside the offside. What a shot that is. Down on one knee. Right into the stand. Quality. Just watch how Shane Watson gets a little lower with his legs here. The reason being is Santoki's not getting as much bounce on this surface as he normally would because of the lack of bounce in the surface. So Shane Watson's adapted quickly there and managed to find a way to get that timing. Powered straight. But a well-positioned man at long on, quite straight. He was able to get around. That's the difference between high-class batsmen and your average-class batsmen at this level. The way that players adapt to surfaces quickly. That's why Shane Watson was so potent in IPL cricket when he came over and played for... The franchise of Rajasthan Royals and Chennai Super Kings. Much in demand player. Yeah, you might want to get forward to Santoki if it's going to bounce like that. 14 taken off his first over, though. It's 21 without loss.
The Australia legends captain Shane Watson, the early aggressor for them in this must-win match. They want to have a chance of going through to the semi-finals. And Doolin at the other end, just doing the right thing, just getting his skipper on strike. Powell just not happy with his footing. Left foot seems a little sore, or ankle. We had a fantastic crowd here for the India-England game. We will get a few more in for the second game today. What a shot, second time in a row that Shane Watson has clipped over mid-wicket. This was an even better shot, I feel, than the first one, right out the middle. First shot in this inning, Shane Watson played a lot squarer, but this time he's looking straighter, going over mid-wicket. And that's his strength against the new ball. Seen that so many times in IBL cricket. If you leave that mid-wicket region open, where you don't have the fieldsman in the inner ring and there's a gap there, he'll go along the ground. But because that player is in the ring, he's decided to go over the top. You can see the mid-wicket. Now they've pushed deep square leg out. And that deep square is forward of square rather than on square because Shane Watson hits straighter in that region rather than using his wrists and going squarer. So he's always looking in that mid-wicket region. Good field placements from the West Indies here. One of Powell's favourite moments in international cricket is not so much his bowling, it's his batting. Because he is out in the middle. As we've watched Shane Watson here go. He'll get wrapped on the pad. He was batting with the great Brian Lara at the SCG, four overs to go in the evening, when Brian Lara broke Alan Border's record as the most runs scored in Test cricket. Straight, there's a man at long on, but it's not going to carry to him. It was clothed a little bit by Doolin, which saved him in the end. And those moments are special when you're batting with someone great or one of the greatest batsmen that's ever set foot on a cricket ground. And you're there on that particular moment. Yeah, especially if you're a tail ender, because you don't have too many moments like that with the bat. Nice back cut from Shane Watson. Really well stopped, well, almost stopped by Santoki. Good bit of athleticism. That deserved more, but he can only just parry it round the post like a goalkeeper for four. He was a night watchman on that occasion too. 34 for naught. Big he from Doolan, all the way. So Australia now starting to show some real aggression in this must-win game. The cutter, just a little bit of extra bounce there than normal, but Doolan getting low again. Not standing tall on that particular shot, adjusting well to the conditions. That's right out of the middle as well. That one from Alex Doolin. Straight to Kirk Edwards. Short extra cover. Well, it was the same delivery. The reason why he didn't go square is because they've put a deep mid-wicket out and strengthened up the inner ring on the offside. Well, that's that deep mid-wicket. Hoggy was mentioning there, they've got a deep mid-wicket and a long on now, just to cut off that area. 
This was the six from Doolin. Really nice. Didn't try to overhit, did he? Got nice and low. Not necessarily the easiest shot to play off Santoki, who's skiddy. A few of the young local players out on the boundary, chucking the balls back. Had a big opportunity there to take a catch. But unfortunately, he couldn't on that occasion. Well bowled, Santoki. Just pushed it across. Watson maybe wasn't quite expecting that. He hasn't bowled that line yet. There's a gutsy delivery, that one, to Watson because he's got the protection on the leg side. All the offside is in the inner ring. And Watson was expecting that to be on leg stump. That's why he didn't have the prolific foot movement. Yeah, it was a double bluff, wasn't it? Sometimes you've got to do that as a bowler in T20 cricket. You can't just have the batsman know exactly where you're going to bowl because of the field you've got set. You've got to be willing to take the odd risk, the odd bluff. Yeah, you just can't be predictable. You set the field for 80 to 90% of the deliveries that you're going to bowl. But every now and then you've got to take that risk and bowl something different that the field's not set for because the batsman's not expecting it. You're exactly right there, Matt. That's the wrong line, though. Too far down, leg side just helped around the corner by Watson for a boundary. Good end to it for Australia. 10 off the fourth, it's 44 without loss. Just starting to get a little bit dark here. Still not quite fully night, but the lights have been working for quite a while now. This man's as tall as a floodlight. Suleiman Ben, 41 years old. Big Ben, 88 wickets in 96 games. Fantastic economy, six and a half. You don't see that too often. Been really good in this tournament as well. Hasn't gone for many at all. Shot! Just stayed with that. Went straight over the man at mid-off who was up. That's a really good cricket shot. Straight away, he pushes the deep mid off out and brings the deep mid on up. What he's trying to do here is ask Doolan to play against the spin rather than with it. And this time he goes leg side with the slog sweep. Doesn't get any of that really. That was a very impressive first ball. That's not an easy shot to play against Suleiman Ben because of his angle, because of his bounce. Got to be careful with that. And skid on despite his height. First came across Ben in 2003, Australia to the West Indies, and he rocked up to the nets in Barbados, holding his left arm spin. Wait, 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 wait. And four years later, he was playing in Adelaide and got a Pfeiffer. And the first wicket of that Pfeiffer was Shane Watson. Day two of the morning, first ball, he got Shane Watson out. And that's one of his favourite memories of playing against Australia. The Pfeiffer in the Adelaide Test Match, 2007. Down the track, over the leg side. Just over the boundary as well to Alex Doolin after a watchful start. It's got going here and he's hardly broken sweat. All timing. This is great batting from Doolin. Manipulating the bowling. Goes over mid-off when mid-off was in the ring and now mid-on out. And he doesn't take too much risk, still goes straight. This one's looped up, it's a full toss, and it might be another six, you know, it is. 
What an end to the over. Started with four, finished with two sixes. Ben goes for 16. It's 60 without loss. Whichever side wins, I support. He's slippery, the Jamaican, Jerome Taylor. Played all around the world, played for the Pune Warriors. He's played for uh, Leicestershire, played county cricket for Leicestershire as well. When at his best, he used to just swing it away from the right-handers at a decent clip. Well, I haven't been fortunate enough to venture out of my hotel room that much because of the rain, but I have reason to believe it is absolutely exquisite out there. Round the river song. Still plenty of batting in this Australian lineup. Some some big hitters to come. We think of Ben Dunku's. He's still playing his trade around the world in some of the T20 leagues, so not quite out the game. Brad Haddon, who was in great touch in the previous one against Bangladesh. Well, the good thing for the Australian side is that, firstly, Cameron White, who did really well in the first game, they've been able to bring in Alex Doolan, who... who Originally from Tasmania, played a little bit of T20 cricket for the Melbourne Renegades, but certainly was known more for the longer format and got an opportunity to represent Australia in the baggy green. I think he's made, I think he made his debut against South Africa. Actually, it sort of was a was a period where Australia were were toying with different ideas on on who to be at the top of the order, who to find in the middle. I think of people like, I think it was Curtis Patterson was, was, was given a go. Before that, there was Ed Cowan. It was just that, that phase of Australian cricket where they were struggling to deal with the fact that they... They weren't that legendary side anymore. Watson finds the boundary again. It concludes the power play in the ideal fashion. 68 without loss after six. Well, who would have thought that they'd be ahead of the game after watching Dwayne Smith smash it to all parts, giving the West Indies the ideal start inside the power play. Australia have just helped themselves to 68 off the first six. And it hasn't just been the Shane Watson show. This man, Alex Doolan, has played his part. Yeah, when you look at the West Indies innings, there's 15 fours, eight sixes. The Australians already six fours and five sixes and we're already in the seventh over so really capitalized on the power play and the fact that there was only two fielders out obviously the field now does change but a chance with the base that they've set to still go big because of the depth that they have ball and boy there was no doubt that they were going to they were going to try and take on the seam because there was always the the threat and it's almost a triple threat that the west indies have with Suleiman Ben with his traditional left arm orthodox and then the, the sort of the Rispin twins. He's got away with that because Watson fancies that stroke. Benny. Yeah, speaking to Cameron White actually before the game, I said, how are all the guys? He goes, what a, he still takes it so seriously. Ball and boy. And you can tell in the game so far when he has gotten out, he's crucified himself. He's been so disappointed. He just wants to be out there hitting the ball, finding the gap, finding the boundary. 
Well, I think that for me has been sort of a highlight of this of this tournament is that is that the, the players their competitive juices have started to flow. This is the power play, and it's the entire thing was just a highlights package because there was boundaries on both sides of the ground. Watson very strong, straight down the ground, straight towards midwicket. But as is mentioned, Doolin played his hand as well. Into the seven, 71 without loss. You, we haven't seen it either. Never a great sight, particularly when the, the ground staff make their move towards the, the covers because they tend to know better than most if it's just a slight drizzle or if it's going to require them to do a bit of work. Yeah, just going back to that, um, what's been impressive about the competition is that it would be easy for a lot of these players to come and just go through the motions, but it's just the competitive juices that they have within themselves. It does. It just ensures that, that the cricket's good. Yeah, and, and we've even heard from Rohan Gavaska, Gavaska saying that Sachin Tendulkar said, you are part of the India legends. India means a lot. So when you put that jersey on, you play with pride. You make sure you do everything you can to perform well. And we've seen, and we've seen both the Indian and the Sri Lankan legend teams take it very seriously. The others may be a little bit more relaxed, but then all of a sudden when they get out there, you're right. They just switch on and they start going through the gears. And then if something doesn't quite go right, you can see it in their eyes. Comes firing back. Nippy. You know, some of these... Um, we, we saw the other night Darren Powell bowl a bouncer and Brian Lara have to remind him that there's, there's one or two that eyesight might not be as good as what it was a few years ago. But that's just indicative of, of a bowler who has probably been hit for a boundary and thinking, well, hang on, you know, I need a little bit to go my way here and I do have a bouncer still in my pocket. <laughs> Clever from both parties. Yeah, slow one. Oh, look, a little, little bit of love as well. Pace taken off. Watson just checked, got his head out of the way. Didn't rush, didn't panic. Enough. And then realised he had to get on his skates the other end because the ball was being thrown his end. Something that he's kind of used to at the back end of his career. Again, pace off, but this will just be one. With this slight drizzle falling on the ground at the moment. Now, you wonder if this just falls into the hands of the Australians a little bit. We saw Bryce McGain with his wrist and just get the ball to hold in the surface. Now, if that, if a little film of water just forms on the surface, it might just skip on and suit the Australian batters a little bit more. Change of field, man at cover going back. And the man at long off is coming up into that 30-yard circle. He won't come in to save one, that I promise you. Oh, that's gone. That's gone a mile. Yeah, maybe that sort of pace. You might have got away with it a few years ago, 10 years ago, Jerome Taylor. Not today. Yeah, pace on, banged in. Watson was waiting. Didn't necessarily go back and across, just shifted his weight nicely to the back foot in perfect position. Extension of the arms. 
Yeah, everyone can look and admire at that shot. Yeah, get your selfie. <laughs> Give me the ball. It's amazing that we actually get the ball back sometimes. Well, it, was, it wasn't so long ago where we would have had to get a new one on the ground because the crowd weren't allowed to even touch the ball or now the world is changing again hopefully for the better no! sent back end of the eighth another good one for australia 10 from it 81 without loss Brilliant innings from Smith, 65 off 33, but he's being matched by the Australian Legends captain Watson's 44 of 31. And Doolin's been the surprise package. Just 19 Double. deliveries he's faced. He's 31 not out. And now we're going to have some Rispin. Devendra Bishu. What about that for an economy rate? Under seven. Whoa! Shaved the off stump. Shaved it. This is the problem when you turn the ball. You turn it too much. Short. Doolan was ready to put it, stayed low. I don't know how that missed. No pace either. He's bowling it very, very slowly. You can already see the length here that Bishu's bowling compared to the length that McGain bowled. Know that he was successful and got a handful of wickets, but no real chance yet for the Australian batters to step and hit. They've had to play back to both deliveries. No! And again. And yeah, that's probably the difference, hasn't it? That we've already seen already from the West Indians that the length has been right, whereas the Australians, more so Jason Crazier. <laughs> As we take a look at how close that was to the off stump. Gone. Out the ground. Flat six. Still has immense power, Shane Watson. And that's 50 for Shane Watson as well. Flat as you like. He's the type of player that never advances to spinners. So it actually suits him. What Mishnoy is, Bish, Misho is uh, bowling at the moment into the pitch. Well, we spoke about that length not allowing them to step and hit, but when you are a good player off the back foot and you're able to move those feet quickly as Shane Watson's able to, and get into a strong position to hit the ball square of the wicket. Just acknowledging the crowd. No ball too late, but. It's another good over. They're just ticking it away, and that's naughty. That's an error. So a boundary will end the over for Alex Doolin. It'll be 12 from it. Nine overs gone, 93 without loss. Australia on course, and we're going to have a Seattle strategic timeout. Brilliant start for your uh, side, Cameron. Chasing 179, 93 on board without loss. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, Shane Watson and Alex Doolan are all batting extremely well. So I thought the uh, West Indies total was very competitive on a you know a bit of a low, uh, spinny wicket. But um, Shane and Alex are making it look quite easy at the moment. What is noticeable is although this is, this is for a very good cause, but you can see the seriousness and the intensity of the players on the field. Yeah, yeah, it's actually surprised us a little bit to be honest with you. The uh, the intensity from from all the teams. So. Um, that's definitely one thing our captain brings, that's for, uh, that's for sure, the, the right intensity. So, 
he's uh i think shane might be a little bit too good for this competition <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been great it's been it's always fantastic coming to india and this series has been no different so and there's another six to alex dillon well on track then australia to chase this big target yeah exactly yep spot on thank you so much cameron for talking with us all right thank you yeah well a lot has been made of shane watson but i tell you what this fella's played well hasn't he whatever shane watson can do he's done slightly better 42 of just 23 deliveries alex doolan so if he wasn't known or recognized for his white ball cricket he may be when he leaves here shame that he's not playing anymore really but you never know last year for the big bash which was the the domestic competition in australia and they were going through a number of club players due to COVID and bio bubbles. So they were scrounging around for all sorts of players. Alex Doolan might put his hand up. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, on a serious, serious note, I think this is, you look at this and you think, some of these guys could still be playing grade cricket. We call grade cricket back in Australia. And that's rolled. The impact that they could have on some of the young players still trying to come through the system. but. It, it's something that's happened, I suppose, globally, is once players retire from the professional game, that's the end of it for them. Yeah, long gone of the days where someone has stayed within the club and they play when they're 40, 45, and their son comes through and they play, you know, third grade, fifth grade with their son. Um, but you'd like to think that at some opportune times, they actually get back to club cricket. I know Shane Watson has certainly done that with Sutherland. 102 without loss. The Australia legends have made close to the perfect start to this run chase. 102 without loss of 10. And Watson goes high again. It's got legs too. This is a fantastic knock, isn't it? 59 now of just 38 balls. Change of ends for Bishu. You just can't pitch it there to the muscle of Shane Watson. This is hit hard and flat this time. Same result, completely different shot. Wow, Australia now motoring towards this target. Required rate, just 6.7. The good thing about this shot is Shane Watson has reached out as far as he possibly could just so that Vishnu could not get any turn. If there was any extra bounce, he'd covered it as well. So over pitch straight down the ground. A little shorter, goes to the sweep. Well, that's hit really hard too, but thankfully for Devendra Bishu, straight to Darren Powell, who wrings his hands with a smile on his face. Just look at the footwork. Right back there, a little shorter, so he's just shown. Ball straight down the ground when it's over pitch. Good length. Go to the sweep shot. He's put the bowler off the line knowing it's going to be a little shorter. Gets right on the back foot. Good batting, Watson. Duda comes down the track and it's a third six in the over. Devendra Bishu getting bashed. Well, this is set up from Shane Watson. Bishu just floating it up to Duel and thinking have a little bit more success but Doolan just using his feet very difficult for the bowler when the batsmen are playing him slightly differently responds with the quicker one 
takes the leg by, but he's got a 31 in his first 11 deliveries. Shane Watson likes to play from the crease. Doolan likes to use his feet. Shane Watson with that reach with a sweep shot. All those components just puts the bowler off when he's in a spell against a partnership like this. Always. Good end by Bishu, but still the over goes for 20. Australia, 1-2-2 two, two without loss. As you can see by the Manhattans and score comparisons, overs 11 to 15. Hammer blow for Australia. And that's another hammer blow from the bat of Alex Doolan, who goes to a half century, and he has done it in some style. He has out hit Shane Watson with some fantastic stroke play like this. Strike rate, an extraordinary 196. Man, he can play the slog sweep. Good shot. Just picking the line straight away, Doolan, knowing that the left arm leg spinner is trying not to give him any room, just getting that front leg out of the road. That's the way to play left arm leg spin too, when it, the spinner's trying to set you up for the wrong one. Well, the West Indies from here need something close to a miracle now. To start with, they have to break this partnership in the next over or two, otherwise it's going to be done. It's really all they have to do from here is just knock the ball around and they will stroll home. Chance, oh, what a grab! Captain Kirk going into orbit. One-handed, best catch of the tournament. Still feel building is the best component of the game. It always provides the best highlights. You don't get much better than this. West Indies have always been the most athletic in the game, Doolan 56, brilliant innings, 130 for one. Powerful batsmen keep on coming for Australia. Ben Dunk strides to the crease. Strike rate 130 in his 159 T20s. Just 35 years old. And he starts with a bang. What a way to get your innings underway. Throw that back from the stands, please. You watch from the stands. You know that there's not that much bounce from the left arm Chinaman. Straight away you go to the sweep shot, 
one of his favourite shots. This is why he's played a lot in T20 cricket around the globe in tournaments globally. And the drag down is scythe through the offside to the man in the deep. Another good over for Australia. 15 from it, 12 gone, 137 for one. What a fantastic opening partnership between Shane Watson and Alex Doonan. Went for 130. West Indies bowlers for that opening partnership. And it means that the Aussies are well ahead of the game. Look, 23 runs ahead of where the West Indies were at this stage. Should be a formality from here. Dwayne Smith into the attack and he should have picked up a wicket. He cannot believe it. It was right there for William Perkins. Just slip through like a slippery fish. Just snapping out the ball rather than just giving with it the keeper. Smith very competitive. He'll be upset with that. Perkins will be too. Opening partners to Hoggy as well. So I think that might be a discussion point the next time they walk out to bat. Oz Perkins, I'll be on the skates. I'll be doing what Davies was doing last night, leaving the crease early so I don't get run out. Beautiful, powerful shot from Watson. And equally good piece of fielding from Bishu on the boundary. And the West Indies still fighting hard here in the field. Fantastic catch from Captain Kirk. The dismiss Doolan and Bishu, despite being expensive with the ball, doing his bit in the field. Just making sure that Australia have to work for these final 40 runs. That's it, hard. Out to my man Bishu again, well fielded. This is Dolan. Kirk. Edwards. Just look at the athleticism. He did well to hold on to the ball when he hit the ground as well. Often the elbow can force the ball out. He looks very fit, Kirk Edwards. He looks like he could be playing international cricket right now. The shape he's in. What was it HD described him as? A, a boxer. And about a light heavyweight or something like that. Speaking of heavyweights, Sachin will be in the house very soon. Tendulkar. He set the world alight the other night, but the game was cut short because of rain. Hopefully the crowd get a bit more extra entertainment tonight from the Indian contingent. That's another six from Ben Duck. He looks a million dollars at the moment. 15 of just six balls, 147 for one. Australia on the verge, keeping themselves in the hunt for the semi-finals. They certainly are in the hunt. They have been really impressive with the bat today, particularly Shane Watson. 
That's another maximum. We've seen quite a few today from the Aussies. 15. Generally, it's the West Indies that are getting the sixes more often than the Australians. But today, it's a little differently. In approach. Yes, yeah, good point, Hoggy. That's been a big difference between the sides, actually. Eight maximums for the West Indies, 15 for Australia, almost double. It's pretty difficult to see who's man of the match at the moment because McGain's three for and very economical. Only 23 coming off those four overs of his. Kept Australia in the game and kept the West Indies to a low total or lower total. I don't think one delivery that Ben Dunk has faced yet has not hit the middle of his bat or somewhere near it. He's swinging very hard as well. Shane Watson absolutely loves that area, doesn't he? From long on round to deep mid-wicket. Oh, catch it in the crowd. Pinball. It's down. Had a few chances there. Straight this time. Has he got enough? Yes, of course he has. Never in doubt. Watson can still get 100 here. Well, he better not let Dunk back on strike because Dunk's just hitting them as effectively. It's a little bit of by play between bowler and batsman. Still having a little bit of fun, but the bowler will be very, very disappointed here. Has he got his man? Has he got his man? No, he hasn't. That is just way too big. The boundary is not big enough for Watson today. Muhammad just can't find the right length against Watson because he's got that big stride. And he turns a good length delivery into a half volley without using his feet. A quicker delivery does the job. 167 for one. This will fall safely, but they'll just no, 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 no. trot through for a single. There hasn't been many uh, quick run twos here this evening, but they, they haven't needed to, the men in gold, because they've found the boundary at will. All three of them that have walked to the wicket. Just a sharper delivery. Seemed like seam up rather than the flipper. Still a quicker delivery, lower trajectory. Not the bounce. This could be the end. This could be the end. Suleiman Ben holds on to Shane Watson at long on. And a very entertaining innings, a match-winning innings, you would think, comes to an end. He's 12 runs short of a 100. He needed two sixes to get that particular milestone. There's only 11 runs needed. So he took his chance. The moment wasn't there, but a wonderful innings of 88 from Watson, 168 for two.
sector. Calling right time over to you. Starts with the boundary, as has become customary with the Australians. This just the traditional cut from Ferguson. Joining in on the fun. South Australian played one test match, got run out in the second innings. And he was unlucky not to get a second opportunity. Callum Ferguson. Brilliant first class player. South Australia. He's here because of Watson not getting enough on that. He was looking for his hundred. You had to go after it. Had to take the opportunity. Yeah, he did. He needed to hit both out the ground, didn't he? To get to get to that hundred, there was only eleven needed for victory. There's one big hit away here from a victory for Australia to keep their hopes very much alive to get to the semi-final stages of this tournament. Callum Ferguson, recently retired, strike rate of 124, the South Australian. Get a single and Smith will have to bowl this final delivery to Ben Dunk, who, let me promise you, is looking to finish it with this delivery. Comfortable this evening, the Australians at one stage, it looked as though they were going to chase a big one, a real big one, especially when Dwayne Smith was at the wicket, because everything he hit went to the boundary, but as soon as they managed to get rid of him, things changed. Sweet. Four. Four. So they'll just need a single now, Australia. The 15th comes to a close. 178 for two. the masterpiece as far as a run chase goes for Australia they've been ahead of the game from the very first ball the power play was exceptional the middle period no different now they just need one to win plenty of overs remaining Ferguson will be on strike and Kirk Edwards will call all his men into the 30-yard circle here we go Australia will end it how they begun with a boundary, a magnificent performance by the men from down under. They may have aged slightly, but I tell you what, they can still play this great game. Commanding performance from the Australian batsman. She's been all batting today. West Indian batsman had a little bit of fun, but the Australian batsmen were just a little better. They found the boundaries more often. And the pass score was 200 plus. The West Indies didn't get it. And Australia just found that total a little too easy. Interesting as well that it was the West Indies who won the toss and decided that they would have a bat first, which has not been the customary thing to do for captains in any tournament, never mind this tournament. I feel that chasing is, is the best thing, particularly here on the subcontinent. But... Kirk Edwards said, tonight we're going to have a bat first. Looking at the wicket before the start of play, just seemed as though it was going to be a little uneven. Uh, there were just little plates on that wicket which were loose and seemed to play fairly, uh, fairly clearly, um, just naturally, ball coming onto the bat. 
And uh, I thought it was going to play a lot differently, whether the bowlers just bowled off the line of the stumps rather than stump to stump where those plates were a little loose. Um, and just missing it. I thought it was just going to be up and down and tougher for the batsman, but it's just good that the curator's been able to produce a good wicket with a high-scoring affair so that we can entertain the fans that are watching. It's certainly hard for the bowlers to accept that, that the fans are entertained when the ball disappears all around the ground, and that it did. Shane Watson walking in at the top of the order, 88 or 50 deliveries, and he was extremely well supported by Alex Doonlid and the Tasmanian, 56 off 30 deliveries. Ben Dunk got his opportunity. He came in at number three, started with a six with his very first delivery, and Ferguson, well, he just put the last nail in the coffin. Well, it was good batting, dominant batting. The Australian batsmen adapted to the type of bowling that the West Indies were dishing up. The odd one was keeping low with round arm type deliveries. And then when there was a bit of extra bounce, they capitalized on that as well. But when it was a spin, they either used their feet or used their reach to put the spinners off their line and length. And with that, they were able to have easy scoring opportunities presented to them. And that scorecard, or the bowling card, is not right looking for the West Indies. The difference has been McGain was able to get three wickets for 23 off his four overs. The West Indian spinners weren't able to create that pressure. And Australia were able to take the game away with absolute ease. So it was the West Indies legends who won the toss. And in their 20 overs, 178 for six. Dwayne Smith, sensational. 65 of 33 deliveries. Edwards, 46 of 33. McGain, the pick of them, three for 23. Australian legends in reply, it was one-way traffic. It was an absolute exhibition of power hitting. They hit 18 sixes. They win by eight wickets. We're off to a break. When we come back, the post-match presentation. Welcome along to the presentation for the SkyExchange.net Road Safety World Series. And congratulations to the Australia legends. That was a seriously impressive performance. We've got a little bit of drizzle but hopefully it's not going to get too strong. We're going to crack on anyway. First of all, thank you very much to the Cricket Association of Uttarakhand, the Dehradun Police and Administration for all of their support. We've also got plenty of sponsors as well. We thank all of them. SkyExchange.net, Ease My Trip, Sat Sport News, See It Tires, Cycle Pure Agarbatis, Kajaria Tiles, Royal Stag, Dream 11, Vimal Elaichi, Tiger Exchange and AVR News. Allow me to introduce you to our presentation party as well. We have today Mr. Saga Bosale representing Road Safety World Series. Miss Neelam Tiwari also representing the Road Safety World Series. And Mr. Ashanand Nagapure who is also with Road Safety World Series. Mr. Ajit Kataria representing Sat Sport News. Mr. Harshit Tomar representing Ease My Trip and Mr. Raj Suri representing SkyExchange.net. I'd like to start by calling the losing captain, Kirk Edwards, up for a chat, please. Hi, Kirk. Hard luck there. What were your thoughts at halfway? Did you think you had enough? Uh, I thought we were about 30 or 40 runs short, but... Um you know, it's still a decent total. We thought we had a fighting total. Yeah, you maybe could have scored a few more. You were in a fantastic position around about the 12, 13 over mark. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I thought we were about 40 runs short. So, you know, that's what it is. What do you make of the effort with the ball then? Not quite at your best? Uh, not quite at the best today, but also credit to the Australian batters, the opening pair especially. Those guys, you know, they really jumped us and um, they played two terrific knots. So, well done to them. There was some very good fielding interspersed within that, not least yourself. Have you been practicing flying? You were like Superman there. No, I don't know what happened there, man. <laughs> We'd like to see more of that, please, that's for sure. Uh, listen, it's not all bad news. You're through to the semi-finals. Uh, any preferences as to who you'd like to play? 
Uh, not necessarily, you know, we just uh, look forward to playing a good game of cricket, whoever the opposition is, you know, we this is this is all about, um, you know, good cricket coming out, uh, seeing nice crowds, playing playing against guys that you played against in the past and stuff like that, so it's, it's a great tournament, whoever we play, we play. Absolutely, enjoying every minute of it. Good to hear from you, Kirk, we'll see you in Riper. Yes, man, thank you. Right, I'd like to now ask along Shane Watson, the winning captain, for a chat. Well done, Shane. Was that your best performance by a mile today overall as a team? It was. It was definitely um, better, that's for sure. Um, after we were able to pull things back, after Dwayne Smith really got away to a flyer, um, we were certainly in the game. The wicket, wicket held up really nicely, so it was, um, it was pretty good to bat on in the end. Was that a really key moment? The last few overs from your death bowlers, the likes of Chad Sayers and Dirk Nanners, really reined them back in. It was, and also Bryce McGain bowled incredibly well yeah. through that middle period to be able to just put, it, put the brakes on a little bit. We were, we were leaking runs very quickly and Bryce bowled incredibly well and then um, Chad Sayers and Dirk Nanners finished things off very nicely to sort of make it a, a very gettable total. And then with the bat, you just race to the target through you and Alex Doolan. Are you, are you sure you don't want to come out of retirement, mate? <laughs> no, it's... Um, it was nice to be able to bat with Alex. I haven't really batted too much with him um, before, so it was, a, it was a pleasure to bat with him. It really is just a privilege to be out there, to be honest, to be able to sort of um, rekindle some, some fun battles now that um, our times are done in international cricket. It's, uh, it really is a pleasure and a lot of fun to be out there. Does it still feel just the same when you find the middle of the bat now that you retire from international cricket? It does, yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose that feeling is, is the feeling that I suppose I know better than anything in, in my life is, is when I'm able to get a ball out of the middle. So I thought those days were long gone a couple of, <laughs> after I retired a couple of years ago. So it's, um, it's really nice to be able to get a couple out of the middle. You're still alive in the competition. Yeah. You've got to win your final game. It's against the old enemy, England, <laughs> in Raipur. That is going to be some occasion. It is, yeah. It's, um, it's always a big game against England, no matter when you're, when you're playing, um, playing them. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait. Well played today and well done to your team. Thanks. Thanks. See you soon. Right, let's hand out a few awards, shall we? We're going to start off with the Game Changer of the Match trophy. It's going to be presented by Mr. Saga Bosole. And it goes to, for his two for 32 for Australia legends, Dirk Nanez. Great effort uh, towards the end from Dirk, especially with the ball there. We're going to stick with the bowlers. The best bowler of the match trophy for his three for 23 or four overs to be presented by Miss Neelam Tiwari goes to Bryce McGain. Right, on to the batting then, the most sixes of the match trophy. This is going to be presented by Mr. Ashanar Nagapure. And it goes to a player who hit a staggering nine sixes today, the Australian captain, Shane Watson. Next up, it's the best all-rounder trophy. Uh, the Sat Sport Best News All Rounder Trophy, I should say. It's going to be presented by Mr. Ajit Kataria, and it goes to a player who bowled an over, should have had a wicket, had a catch put down, didn't take one in the end, but he bludgeoned 63 of 33 balls. Dwayne Smith. Okay, on to the final two big trophies. We start off with the Ease My Trip Most Valuable Player Trophy and check for 50,000 rupees. It's presented by Mr. Harshit Tamar. It goes to Shane Watson. And finally, the SkyExchange.net Player of the Match trophy and check for one lakh two. A player who took three for 23 is presented by Mr. Raj Suri. Please put your hands together for Bryce McGain. And Bryce, if you could come over here after you've had your photos for a quick chat. Got your hands full there, trophy check and a mic. 
took the check <laughs> off me. <laughs> well done. That came out very nicely today. They did indeed. Yeah, it was good. I had a, I felt confident. I had a good warm up and uh, important on these conditions is to hit your length. And I, I was really pleased that I was able to do that. Have you been bowling much since retirement? I mean, leg spin is not an easy art to just pick up, is it? No, you're right. And I haven't bowled a lot since retirement, I've got to be honest. But uh, a few games at my local club at, at, in Premier Cricket in Melbourne uh, has helped me along and prepared me pretty well for this one. You enjoying bowling on these pitches? There's a little bit of purchase for you. Indeed there is, yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. And look, full credit's got to go to the groundsmen and the curators for the amount of rain that we've had over the last week. And uh, we've been like caged lions in the, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the hotel. So for the work that they've done and to be able to get the ground up, it's been magnificent. Really well bowled today. Looking forward to seeing you bowling Riper as well. Thanks so much. Right, so Bryce McGay then, the player of the match. That is the end of the post-match presentation. Well, what a performance that was from the Australians. Thought it might be a difficult run chase, but Shane Watson and Alex Doolin, well, they had other things coming. 88 for Watson, 56 for Doolin. Bryce McGain picking up the man of the match for his three for 23. Australian legends, they end up winning by eight wickets. Well, it is a double header and it's the big one next. The hosts, the home side, India legends led by Sachin Tendulkar, who will take on Bangladesh legends. That's coming up next, live from Dehradun. We'll see you soon.